obviously we can't change the past, but these are things, if you've had a number of ankle injuries, um, then these are going to be things that you want to think about as far as preventing that from getting worse. Or having, uh, you know, episodes of low back pain. You're more, you're predisposed to have more episodes. And so, also, you know, lower scores um, that people um, denote, you know, if they feel that they haven't uh, recovered well from an injury, that oftentimes will further increase their rate of re-injury. Fitness levels are also a main part of injuries. Um, a lot of people are not physically fit and cannot perform as well, like they want to. Um, i.e. two mile run. A lot of uh, arm shows or did a lot of testing show that two mile run is a lot of soldiers injuries. Um, also with the OBAC, so power throw, long jump, deadlift, all that causes an injury to a lot of problems with you. And so if you have poor scores in your two mile run time, that's a pretty good indicator um, that you're increased risk for injury. We'll give you some times to shoot for, but again, if that body is not ready to do something repeatedly, then things start kind of the wheels start coming off the wagon, so to speak. So again, it's gonna be one of the things that we want people to focus on is good aerobic health. Then strength uh, recently has been getting a lot of popular as far as research. Um, weakness is associated with a litany of injuries like groin strains, ankle sprains, um, low back pain, um, etc. So and they've done actually done some studies where um, Males, if you can't squat 2.2 times your body weight, or females 1.6, um, just that metric alone predisposes you um, for all lower extremity injuries. And when they use strength training as a preventative uh, you know, maintenance program, then um, that can be effective. Some studies show up to 66%. I'm not saying that's something that you really need to do, you know, slide down a whole bunch of weight on the squat rack, but it just kind of is a testament to if you are stronger, then um, you're going to be able to handle um, a lot more demands placed on the body. Well, 174 pounds, that should squat, I think, over 400 pounds. So, <laughs> right. So, this is not something that, like I said, it's not a, a metric that you need to shoot directly for, but it's the idea that what they see is people that are stronger. Um, and have you know a little more of a base um, in strength, uh, they reduce their injuries. So just kind of demonstrating that. Well, movements and uh, and um, and corporal assembly are like balanced. Uh, when they decrease in dorsal flexion and your ankle do not come up, you can have no movement in the ankle. It causes a lot of worse injuries. So ankle uh, ankle sprains, uh, uh, what is it called? Shin splints, stuff like that. Um, having a lot of balance will uh, prevent that. Um, also, like doing a wide testing or a hop testing to work on that. Yeah, so it comes down to a lot of control. So, you know, as RG3 played for Redskins or the Washington football team a number of years ago. Um, and again, this was him during the combine, and people started to, um, teams didn't want to pick him up. Uh, because they thought he was going to come to injury, which he, which he was. And that's, you know, when he's doing his um, vertical, that's his landing right there. That's how he lands and controls himself. And again, we saw pretty early on in the season that it was ACL, and then I think when he came back, did it again, and then he, he was pretty much done. Yeah. And then coming down just to the training methods is when people go too hard, too fast, and too frequent. Um, and so, again, you need to be diligent as far as like giving the body enough time to make adaptations and to get stronger and have better endurance and planning that out over a broad period. Not just going from zero to 100 and in the blink of an eye. That's going to make folks a lot more prone to injury. And that's not just with running. Again, that applies with, with weight training too. If you're not used to something, um, or haven't been doing that a lot in the past, again, it's always easier and better for the body to start with you know, lower intensity, lower volume, and then build up gradually. Other health factors, so sleep, you get it at least eight hours of sleep, or if you get less than eight hours of sleep, that's an injury factor. I know a lot of people don't get that much, but that's what they say. Um, smoking, any type of tobacco products, uh, will cause many different types of injuries. 
obesity. So um, being overweight or being underweight also can cause injuries. You, um, you can cause chronic pain, like for example, low back pain uh, if you're over, uh, obese, and um, that will uh, just having poor health things. And like Sergeant Bowden was saying, you know, like eight hours, that's the number they came up with. Again, that's going to be you know hard for a lot of folks, but at least we want to make people cognizant of this as putting it as a, a priority, at least getting a little bit more um, each night or when you can. All right, so those are going to be the most like, well-established risk factors for injury. So who thinks are going to be um, what our preventative strategies are going to be? More free. Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, increasing your fitness. Strive for a high road of fitness. Uh, what the research shows that two mile run time, uh, males, if you can do it under 15 and a half minutes, females under 19 minutes, that's when you start to see the tipping point of your injury risk starting to reduce. Again, that's something that you can shoot for as a personal goal and start to build up towards. Um, the performance triad, uh, which is um, put out by the Army, that they recommend about 150 minutes uh, per week. Uh, moderate or greater intensity of aerobic exercise. And the last point uh, is something I think is pretty important. Uh, it's find you know, things that you're going to stick to. Um, if you do something you hate, you're probably going to do it maybe for about two or three weeks, and then it starts to get put on the back burner. But if you change it up, find things, you know, whether it be like rower, elliptical, biking, you know, get creative with it, that you'll stick to and be diligent with, that's kind of the best um, solution long term. Getting stronger. So with, with getting stronger, that would mean going to the gym and starting to lift everything you can. It mean uh, just working on at least three times a week, just some rest in between those days. Um, when you're lifting, do not try to lift everything you can. Try to lift moderate weight and more repetition. Uh, focus on your uh, your strength and your power. So squats, deadlift, bench press. Um, them are the three main uh, components. Um, also, uh, work on trying to get your one rep max at least once a week to uh, endorse your uh, arm and strength. And so, again, if you're not familiar with those things, um, you know, you're probably not going to jump right into them. But we'll put in our resources section that will get pushed out, um, you know, resources that you can take advantage of as far as how to start incorporating those things. Um, but again, just keeping the idea that if you're not familiar with strength training or some type of resistance training, um, that's going to be something that you need to start thinking about um, as far as reducing your risk for injury. And so I love this quote by um, Mark Lipito. He's a pretty well-established author in strength conditioning. The strong people are harder to kill than weak, than weak people and just more useful in general. And that kind of sums it up. All right. And then like we talked about earlier, um, is just having better control. So if you have, if you're relatively fit and you're strong, we want to make sure that your body has the ability to control itself. So using balance and agility exercises um, throughout your, your training. And that's where a lot of the preventative um, injury uh, programs that have gotten a lot of good results, they focus a lot on that. So whether it be for like ankle injuries, ACL injuries, um, knee, other knee injuries. Um, and it doesn't have to be you know, full workouts, just of those activities by themselves, but just kind of sprinkling them in. So for example, if you're doing an exercise that is usually kind of a double leg exercise, you can switch it to a single leg. So going in the far right or the far um, left there, uh, someone that's doing a deadlift, make it a single leg deadlift, uh, decrease the weight, obviously. And just doing you know, nice and easy uh, line hops, um, setting up some cones, going side to side, doesn't have to be a big theatrical presentation, but just getting the body used to moving quickly, under control, and multiple planes of motion. Uh, for the folks though that need a little extra help, you know, especially if you've had a lot of ankle injuries in the past, um, and, and that you know maybe a little bit on the fritz, again, having a good soft lace-up ankle injury that you can use during sports um, or during activities such as you know. Um, like football, softball, things like that, uh, it's going to be pretty useful as far as reducing recurrence of those ankle injuries. Um, and it doesn't decrease your performance. So people still have the same speed and stuff like that. And just moving better. So like we talked about in the past, you know, if you're having difficulty moving to a good range of motion, um, then just focusing in on that um, as far as 
uh, things that you can control. So, a lot of it's been focused in on the lower extremity, um, and we're going to go over one right now. But it's going to be a self screening tool um, that we'll put in our resources section. Um, just an example of things that you can test out on your own to see if you're meeting some good marks. And if you're not, those might be something that you want to address. And we'll give you tools for that as well. So Captain Gagne is, I think, is utilizing our uh, hot packs right now. But Sergeant Bose here, when he gets done, we'll, we'll go through that just so everyone can kind of see an example of what I'm talking about here. So, moving on, again, when we talk about training, uh, we want to make a plan, write things out, have an idea of where you want to go um, as far as your overall goals. Don't just try to bite off a lot more than you can chew. Something that has stood the test of time is the 10% um, training point. So, don't increase your volume um, of running more than 10% um, a week. So, you take the total, you know, mileage that you're doing per week, and then pick 10%, and that's kind of the range that you can increase it um, for the next week. That being said, if you're coming under um, weather with any kind of illness, or you're not feeling right, um, or you're not sleeping well, again, don't feel like you need to increase, you can decrease or keep the same um, volume. And again, the Army's figuring out that um, they shouldn't just keep doing long runs every day, and so, Something that has really um, produced a lot of good benefit is um, incorporating interval training and like um, tempo runs. So instead of doing five miles, again, do some sets of like 400 meters going higher intensity. Same thing with weight training, don't increase um, your volume and intensity, so your reps and sets, as well as weight, um, aggressively in the same session. So just to rewind, when we're talking about like the self screen, um, yeah, it's hard to go some health things right here. But if this is a wall you can get up into your hut um, or back at home, he's going to take the width of his hand, and that'll be the distance he places between the toes and the wall. Okay. And then he's going to help kind of just guide that knee towards the wall, and he should be able to tap it without his foot ripping off. Sergeant Bose has had a lot of ankle sprains and injuries in his history of sports, and so this is something that we actually worked on here with him. But again, it's pretty easy to do on your own, and then you can see just where you stand. That's a pretty good metric to take um, to give folks with good results. You think that folks be able to wall as you Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, getting ready. So uh, you see a lot of professional athletes, uh, even uh, college athletes, do a lot of warm ups. Um, before they start their activity or any type of sport or anything. Um, with these warm ups, these uh, really get your body ready to go from zero to 100. Um, uh, I my cell phone. Uh, and they also help you with your uh, your performance during the activity. Uh, and it stops you from um, you know, tearing and shrinking the muscle before uh, during the activity and uh, sport or anything. Yeah, so it's hard to the same. We see like a lot of quad strains, hamstring strains, calf strains, like you name it, uh, we're seeing that a lot here. Um, and so um, research is pretty good that just having that good warm up beforehand kind of prevents um, a lot of those. And, you know, and so when we say dynamic warm up, we're not talking about just getting down and stretching statically and just holding it. Um, so our bows will help kind of demonstrate is, you know, if you're with the team or on the field, again, you can use it in like a 10 meter um, little block of the field and just be walking like knee to chest, getting the claws as well, on the body. Yeah, so something that kind of preps the body for movement. Once he does a series of some of those, um, then he'll get into a little bit of quicker movement. So like high knees, then you go to butt kickers, and then he can finish into skips. If nothing else, if you already spent the money on the jersey for your team, then at least you know, like, look cool. You know, it's pretty intimidating when the other team, you know, has like their stuff together to do like a coordinated warm up, but then your team is kind of like standing around. I mean, it's some of the intimidation factor is nothing else. Look like a chuck wagon. Yes. 
see if I can add that into the next one. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then, you know, it goes back to um, what we were talking about before. Uh, practicing good sleep habits, good sleep hygiene. Um, these are some of the, the three most consistent things that have um, stood the test of time as far as producing benefit and quality and duration of sleep. So setting a consistent sleep and wake schedule as best you can. Again, we're not looking for perfection, but just something to keep in mind um, as you kind of plan and prioritize your day. Try to make your room pretty quiet, cold, um, and dark. So unplug a lot of things that make a lot of ambient light um, and noise. And then wind down with a pretty good bedtime routine. So instead of like action-packed Netflix, um, maybe reading or something a little less, uh, less intense. Yeah. All right. So uh, again, with uh, tobacco products, elbow uh, if you quit them or try to limit it as as much as possible, to improve your fitness, your sleep, and your health, um, and just improve elbow uh, injuries. And so, like, we'll put in our resource section um, some things that are available to service members as far as helping kind of curb that. Um, and I know, like, if you tell someone that smokes not to smoke, they'll probably tell you to pound sand. But again. It's something that we at least want people to be aware of, just for their overall general health and the fact that it does play a big red, uh, big part in developing um, chronic pain and making you a little bit more um, at risk for an injury here. And then as far as um, overall health, again, consulting with a dietitian or getting to the Army Wellness Center um, to help with weight loss. Um, we see, we use this a lot at Fort Benning. Um, we, Pretty good success as far as like trainees or permanent party that are getting back um, into things after a significant injury um, or have recurrent injuries. And again, if Vermont, I know there's probably not one close by, I think the nearest one is going to be Fort Drum. And I know that's a little bit of a drive, but um, a lot of the testing um, and things they can offer you, um, they would cost about like $4,000 on the civilian sector um, if you were to piece it all together. And that's getting to you absolutely free. And so if it's a once a year thing that you make that trip and just see some of the trends or every six months and see the trends of your improvement, you can, you can track your improvement with a lot of good success. Um, also with the dietitian, uh, Major Autumn was supposed to be coming this week from Germany. However, he got um, pulled away for some other business. So he'll be coming to Bond Steel um, later on down the line. But again, he can be a good uh, resource. For everyone here, if they have a dietitian company. And so, when we consider everything that we've talked about, a lot of it comes down to just um, being ready and training how we're going to fight it. So, if we're going to be demanded to lift heavy things, we want to practice that. If we're going to be demanded to move quickly in multiple directions, again, it's something that we should practice. Um, it doesn't have to be something, like I said, that it you know, takes up a lot of your time, but again, a little bit here and there has a big downstream effect. Um, and so these are all things that we can control um, and things that we can start thinking about and prioritizing. If we're really kind of harping on readiness with everything else, like our, our equipment um, and other types of planning, then we can kind of look inward um, and use that same mentality to help kind of reduce a lot of illness um, and injury. All right. Are there any questions about anything that we went over today? Thanks everyone for coming out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.